Hello, my name is Alice Moores and I'm a Clinical Education Leader in Programme Quality for the Statewide Occupational Therapy Clinical Education Programme in Queensland Health. This presentation is the first in a series on clinical decision making. It discusses what clinical decision making is and how it links to clinical reasoning. Firstly, let's consider how clinical decision making is described in the literature. The terms clinical reasoning and clinical decision making are often used interchangeably. Higgs and Jensen consider that clinical reasoning refers to the overall process of thinking during clinical practice, while clinical decision making emphasises the outputs or the resulting decisions. Put another way, clinical decision making is both an outcome of and a component of clinical reasoning. As clinical decision making and clinical reasoning are so closely linked, it's important to consider how both concepts are used in practice. Here is a definition of clinical reasoning by Trowbridge and colleagues. Clinical reasoning is defined as, a, as the cognitive and non-cognitive process by which a healthcare professional consciously and unconsciously interacts with the patient and environment to collect and interpret patient data weigh the benefits and risks of actions and understand patient preferences to determine a working diagnostic and therapeutic management plan whose purpose is to improve a patient's well-being. Important things to note about this definition are that clinical reasoning is about cognitive and non-cognitive processes, so essentially it's about thinking. Not all thinking is conscious, some is unconscious. It involves the health professional considering the patient and their environment, which is often complex. There's a lot of information to weigh up and collaboration with the patient is important with the end goal being focused on the patient's well-being. Various authors have investigated and identified different types of reasoning typically used by health professionals. These can be classified into firstly cognitive reasoning processes and secondly interactive reasoning processes. Let's firstly consider cognitive reasoning processes. You may be able to recognise an approach you routinely use or a combination of approaches. Firstly, hypothetico deductive reasoning is when the health professional formulates a hypothesis after observing the patient or client and combines this with their exist existing knowledge. Then they aim to confirm their diagnosis and further tests. Secondly, pattern recognition is when the health professional relies on knowledge and experience of common presentations, which they recognize in a new patient or client. These two types of clinical reasoning are commonly used by different health professionals at different times. Depending on knowledge, experience and the clinical setting, Hypothetico deductive reasoning tends to be used by less experienced health professionals who don't have extensive knowledge or experience to recognise patterns. Alternatively, pattern recognition is a more common characteristic of experienced or expert health professionals who are able to automatically recognise similarities between a new client case and those they have previously experienced. The third type of clinical reasoning process is knowledge reasoning integration. This tends to be used by all health professionals in all cases. It involves the integration of a health professional's knowledge and cognitive skills with reasoning and combines research and experience based knowledge. The second classification of clinical reasoning processes are interactive reasoning processes. These are considered to be evident in contemporary holistic healthcare and are used by all health professionals. Multidisciplinary reasoning involves members of the multi multidisciplinary team making clinical decisions together. Conditional reasoning is used to estimate clients' responses to treatment and likely outcomes. Narrative reasoning is based on stories which provide an understanding of the patient or client's motivations and actions and what's important to them. Interactive reasoning is developed when the health professional and the patient interact together. 
Collaborative reasoning is the shared decision making between the client and the health professional. Ethical reasoning is based on ethical thinking or ethical dilemmas. And teaching as reasoning is the conscious use of advice, guidance and instruction to change or influence a patient's understanding, feelings and behaviours. So to summarise, when health professionals engage in clinical decision making, they routinely combine a number of types of reasoning or processes when working with clients. We've considered some of those types of reasoning processes today. Interprofessional collaboration is fundamental to shared clinical decision making, which is required for healthcare outcomes. Being able to articulate clinical decision making is essential so that health professionals can understand one another's viewpoint and professional con contribution. Health professionals strive for patient-centred practice and patient-centred outcomes, and these can be achieved when there's collaboration between the health professional and the patient, and their needs and preferences are central to clinical decision making. Healthcare contexts are increasingly complex, and this can challenge clinical decision making. Sound clinical decision making is very much context dependent. The next presentation in this series discusses the factors that influence clinical decision making. Here are some questions to reflect on the content of this presentation. How would you describe the terms clinical reasoning and clinical decision making in relation to your own practice and the context in which you work? Which of the clinical reasoning processes do you recognise in your own practice? In what ways does your clinical decision making involve other health professionals? How does information from others, maybe from the client or from other colleagues, impact on your clinical decision making? How do you usually weigh up the benefits and risks of your practice actions as a health professional? Thank you for your reflections and for listening to this presentation today.